through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 199. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today, in honor of the release of Cloud Atlas, we're going to be talking about Tom Hanks. Uh, I want to note, you know, we haven't really talked about him as an actor thus far, yes. but you can go back and check out episode 93, the Michael Bay experience, as uh -huh. it's subtitled, where we talk <laughs> about his work behind the camera in honor of Larry Crown. Ah, uh, yes. It's only appropriate that we talk about him, though, because he's an awesome dude, yeah. and he's done some pretty awesome I mean, work. Come on, so. Tom Hanks. Yeah. Come on. So, it's like, needless to say. Come on. <laughs> needless to say, though, we have a lot of things we're skipping over. We're yes. just trying to hit some tent poles. Let us know your ones you love, you know, but don't really hammer us on and be like, you missed Splash, blah, blah, blah. Because, you know, we realize it. We don't have enough time. Unless you want to watch, like, the five hour MacGuffin yes. on Tom Hanks. Yes. We're not going to be able to fit everything. Which we could do, sadly. Yes. Probably At least too in easily. his case, yeah. <laughs> One of the first uh, breakout roles, ignoring, like, Splash, yeah. was Bachelor Party. Yes. This is the film from Neil Israel, mm -hmm. who also did Surf Ninjas. Oh, no. Nice. That is sort of one of the first sort of quintessential bachelor party yes. wacky antic stories long before the hangover long yes, yes. before bridesmaids or bachelorette this is sort of the one that set that template of mm -hmm. like bachelor parties go going way awry. crazy yeah. And Long before very bad things, any of those ones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, that that another one as well. This one is much more sort of I feel like a much more sort of lighter uh yes. perspective of that. Like yes. it's it's mostly just good natured mm -hmm. craziness, you know. It like, just continues to escalate, but not in a horrifying or gross way no. necessarily. And it's not there's not I mean, sure there's a little bit of tension in the marriage or whatever, because yes. that always has to happen in like bachelor type movies. Yeah. But it never really feels quite as threatening as some of the other ones, you mm -hmm. know, like Hangover or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it's much more just an, es almost more like escalating fun that these yeah. guys are having and rather that, than escalating horror. And honestly, that's probably why it's one of my favorite of them, if not my favorite. Yeah. Like, I like The Hangover, I like Bridesmaids, but I can watch Bachelor Party pretty much endlessly. I think it's so much fun to watch. Plus, it's such a, I mean, for a seemingly long time, a rare Tom Hanks role, because it's young Tom Hanks playing a, like, smart-ass, wise-cracking, kind of not likable well, character, I mean, and I only say that because a lot of his early roles were about being likable, or being, like, kind of yeah. every man, and, and his role in that is much more uh, sarcastic. Even still, I think he's pretty likable. Like, you oh, know, he's likable, but it's more like a, a Han Solo likable than like a, a fluffy bunny Luke Skywalker likable. I can sort of agree with that. But I mean, you know, he had done like bosom buddies and stuff. It's true. So he, yes. he, it's not. It's not as far as film. But he's so he's so charming. <laughs> yeah. That, oh, you yeah. know, even still, like he he. I mean, he, I guess he pushes the envelope a little bit, but it's more just like. Forget who's his lady in this movie too. It's Sonny Katain. Yes, that's right. Yeah, you know. Yes. Uh, from music video <laughs> fame and uh -huh. later police blotters. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but you know, it's it's they he, they have good chemistry, but he just he he carries the film yes. like really. It's hit. He's so funny, I, and that's <laughs> one of the things that you forget about a lot as we go through his career is that he really became know much much more for his serious work as time went on yes but he does comedy so well so incredibly well it, it's always a pleasure even to this day when mm -hmm. one of those films like you know a lot of people shit on larry crown mm. but i still thought it was very charming to see mm -hmm. him in sort of a comedic type role again because he's really really funny when yeah. he wants to be and i just that, think of the burbs that another one exactly you know he's <laughs> as dark and twisted as I, that movie was i think that's one of the reasons why i think um it's a shame the Academy doesn't recognize comedy as much as they should mm -hmm. because comedy really does help you create an, a sense of timing, which mm -hmm. really benefits you in drama and stuff Definitely. as well. So. And I think it's interesting considering all those other uh, Bachelor or Bachelorette type movies mm -hmm. that, I mean, not surprising, a lot of those ones come from true stories in some sense. And, and according to the DVD commentary from Bachelor Party, uh, the film was inspired by the actual bachelor party thrown for the producer bob israel mm. well i wouldn't be surprised if he is related, related to neil yeah I'd and uh, safe bet. yeah and he, bob israel has also produced uh both ace ventura movies mm. 
as well as Bachelor Party and, and a couple other things. They did make a sequel called Bachelor Party 2 that yes, came out like did. 20 years after this. Straight it, to video. I think I like, did it have Cal Penn or somebody in it? It, it, was, it, it was, had, um, what is uh, the gentleman, oh gosh, I can't remember, Harlan Ellison? No, that's an author. Or, Harlan uh, Williams? The guy from Half Baked. And, yeah, Harlan yeah, Williams. yeah, he's yeah. in it, as amongst other people. Awesome. <laughs> Straight to video. I think it came out 2008. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was recent. I saw, I saw it on like Stars or something yeah, one yeah. day. <laughs> Moving right along to another tentpole moment oh, in yeah. his career, another great sort of dramatic comedy that he mm -hmm. worked on. Big. Oh, yeah. Probably one of the best sort of body changing movies. I mean, I would say so. a lot of times, you know, people do like changing bodies with someone else and this is a different sort of spin on that where a kid you know wishes he was big and mm -hmm. ends up waking up Such a an adult great simple premise kid wishes something to a wishing machine and it works like how how simple that's all that's all he had to go with really well i mean and this is and as as we're going through this there are gonna be as i said a lot of tempo type moments and this is one such case where he worked with Penny Marshall. Yes. Penny Marshall, fantastic director. Mm -hmm. I mean, after this, they went on to reteam with a league of their own. Mm -hmm. You know, she she had a huge career there in the early nineties with Awakenings, Renaissance Men. This you know. was the first. She, she became the first female director to ever direct a movie that grossed more than a hundred million at the box office. With very cool. Film. So I mean, obviously a very t good tentpole for her as well. And it's funny to think about because I mean, I think a lot of people think of this as maybe a little kitty, maybe a little. Um, slapped mm. sticky mm -hmm. sort of over the top but tom hanks got nominated for best actor for this role. wow yeah wow he got nominated for this role lost to uh dustin hoffman for rain man oh which is tough yeah yeah and it, the screenplay was also nominated and lost to rain man as well. it, it makes sense because they did a lot of things to make him and uh what was his name david moscow's uh mm -hmm. look like david moscow wore contacts to have the same color eyes as tom hanks and interestingly enough, this is one of my favorite facts I found. To give Tom Hanks an idea how a 12-year-old would be, Penny Marshall would film each grown-up scene with David Moscow playing Tom Hanks' part first. Mm, and then that's funny. to give Tom Hanks an idea of how David Moscow would do it, and then Tom Hanks would copy his behavior and the way he did it. It's just, it's so catchy. There's so many signature so scenes in it. Like, you know, the piano scene in yep. F.A.O. Schwartz. Uh, the, you know, when they they're had stunt doubles on set ready to do it in case they messed it up. So they were determined to get yeah. it right and they got it, it right. It was great. And like the, the song, Jimmy, Jimmy, Coco Pop, yep. Jimmy, Jimmy, Rock. Like, <laughs> yep. there's so many just funny scenes. Like a kid having money, playing with toys, having an apartment. Like, it's oh, just yeah. such a clever premise. And as I said, he got nominated for a Academy Award. Won the Golden Globe for Best Comedic Actor. Deserved. Yeah. Totally deserved. Yeah, such so a great film. Good on him for that. It's just it's just a classic story. It's one story. of those like heartwarming stories that I uh, my cold black heart still enjoys what totally. watching. It's just great. I mean it's 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 again another one of those ones that he does so much serious stuff. And granted it's it's got some serious stuff in the yeah. movie, but yeah. it's much more lighter than you know like <laughs> Saving Private Ryan. So yeah, a lot of people yeah. forget about uh -huh. it. And it almost seems like a different person or a different life. Yeah. He's had several different lives almost mm -hmm. with his work. I mean yeah. from eighties Tom Hanks to nineties Tom oh, man. Hanks. It's huge it's difference. huge difference. And we're gonna talk about that very subject. Yeah. Because in the early nineties the first significant one or one of the first significant ones was Philadelphia. Yes. This is the film uh, about a lawyer who has AIDS, who's fired yes. from his law firm, who hires Denzel Washington to defend him in a case against no, his original class firm. Class action suit yes. or whatever they would call uh, it. I think it's just a dismissal suit. Oh yeah, okay. But this is the one he won his first Academy Award for. Mm -hmm. You know, the film got nominated for a slew of awards, you know. Uh, got nominated for Best Screenplay. Lost to Piano. Um, but, you know, in terms of Tom Hanks' performance, and he's had so many great performances through the years, this has got to be probably top five for me. Like, yeah. it is... It, I, I, I've talked about on the podcast before, like, I think this is one of the first... I mean, obviously, Magic Johnson coming out, yeah. uh, having AIDS, was yes. really somewhere around this time as well. But this is, like, one of the first film uh, stories that was really positively defending AIDS. Yes. Like, you know, this is something that happens to people. It's mm -hmm. not just, like, some gay yeah. disease yeah. that, you know, yeah. we don't care about them. Like, exactly. this is one of those ones that's like, look, you know... Gay people aren't bad, and just because yeah. they're gay doesn't mean they deserve to and, die and, of AIDS. Yeah, and even if they are, even if they're or not, having AIDS doesn't mean that you're a horrible person. No, nope. you know, and it's just tainted. like and the the portrayal of the uh, physical breakdown of Tom yes. Hanks through this film really put a much broader 
perspective i mean obviously people had seen news reports and stuff mm -hmm. like that because the 80s were massively yes. full of deaths i mean if you want to see that watch a documentary how to survive a plague which is coming out this friday as oh, well okay um at least locally in seattle very cool it's it's just it's incredible to watch all the footage behind the scenes and just the, the death tolls are just like mind-blowing yeah and this is one of the first ones to sort of like portray that in a cinematic perspective. I think I remember it being the first time I saw I, I'm sure, yeah, me. I was, I was like 10 like or 11 realistic. when yeah. this came out. So, yeah. yeah. And also the story of Denzel Washington's character initially being repulsed in mm -hmm. some ways by Tom Hanks. It, but as they go through this trial and he sort of begins to understand me, he begins yeah. to respect him. Such as a an great individual. allegory of society. It's like, hey, here's this thing. And your initial reaction is to think all these stereotypes and negative things. But upon actually getting to know yeah. someone and realizing they're a person. Everybody's a person. Everybody's worth defending. And it's a funny thing about this being uh, directed by Jonathan Den, mm -hmm. Um Because, you know, this and Silence of the Lambs were so close together. And, I mean, besides that, I mean, he, had, he directed, like, Rachel Getting Married, but that was 2008. And so for a large swath of time, he really hadn't done anything massively successful yeah. in terms of critical acclaim. And just there was a couple years for him there. That I know, so just he really popped. Which is weird to think that, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 people uh in philadelphia were also in silence of the lambs uh also directed by jonathan dim both movies were scored by howard shore and featured mu music by q lazarus who makes an appearance in philadelphia perhaps they should have been in the truth about charlie too maybe probably. that would have i wonder how many of them are actually mm, in probably. i bet you if you cross-reference uh, any up uh, there's probably a bunch yeah. of them <laughs> you probably but, picking that pool <laughs> but it's funny we talk about his success in that small period because this definitely started to occur for tom hanks i mean immediately the next year forrest gump comes oh, out wins best actor for that as well and obviously forrest gump is the story of a mentally challenged mm -hmm. young man who sort of goes through his life and is involved with all these critical historical moments and sort of like this on again, off again love. Yes. Uh, from his childhood, mm -hmm. Jenny, Robin Wright Penn. <laughs> uh, Tom Hanks, interestingly enough, signed on to the role after only an hour and a half of reading the script. He was not all the way through it, but he agreed with the specific uh, condition that the film had to be historically accurate. So all of those moments that he was pouncing in and out of history, Tom Hanks was okay, wanted to do it, but only if they were accurate to what had happened rather than an interpretation. Which is great. I mean, it's Which definitely... I think really gave the movie a lot of credibility, too, because it felt like something well, that could fit so easily. It's also, you know, it also shows that's been true of his career, too. You know, yes. you think of Paul 13, Band of Brothers, mm -hmm. Pacific. Like, this is... He is definitely a strong interest in history. Yes. And I've actually read both this and the sequel books, the original books, and... Both of them are really good, so I can imagine reading that script and being like, this is a pretty... I don't know if Fantastic it's... Fantastic Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. like, the film won... Uh, it won... It won Best Picture. Wow. It did, I forgot about that. Um, but, like, I don't know if you read the script and you necessarily think this is a Best Picture mm -hmm. winner, but it's going to be a fun film. Yeah. And, you know, it won Best Picture. A lot of, lot of debate about that because it beat uh, Shawshank oh, and Pulp Fiction. Oh, what a year. And I feel... I, I mean, it's a great what year. A year. I, 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 there are a lot of times, like, you know, I'll, I'll criticize, you know, when Titanic won, perhaps, mm -hmm. or... English Patient. Even, English Patient, <laughs> Shakespeare in Love, all won. Oh, Shakespeare in, this, in Love. In <laughs> but, like, this is one I actually... Don't really hate. like you know I was I would have been cool if Shawshank had won mm, I would have been yeah. cool if Pulp Fiction had won but a lot of people hate on Forrest Gump winning and I feel hmm. like that's kind of unfair like a lot of people have hated upon Forrest Gump I think mostly just because it beat Pulp Fiction and Shawshank Redemption and hindsight's always easier Pulp Fiction and Shawshank have so much more of a cultural relevance now I feel and Forrest Gump probably less. Uh. I, Not know, to Tom Hanks' career, but I think people you know, probably think about Pulp Fiction or Shawshank <laughs> more than they do Forrest I think Forrest people Gump. like Shawshank more, I'll give you that. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if I necessarily think Shawshank is more culturally relevant than Forrest Gump. I think they're just about hmm. as equal. I mean, I think Forrest, Forrest Gump might not be as popular, as well-packaged hmm. a movie as Shawshank. But, I mean, in terms of, like, you know, you think about filmmaking or anything like that, like, Shawshank doesn't really do anything that stand out. It just does it what it does very, very well. well. But, you know, there's a lot of movies that have won Best Picture that just did what they did very well, weren't necessarily cinematic. So, you know, it's a, it'd be an interesting thing. I'd be interested to see what people I, think. I, I just think Forrest Gump gets an unfair sort of backlash I because agree. of the fandom of these other I films. And I think I think Forrest Gump is a very enjoyable film still. Like, I yeah. still very much enjoy it. And I, I just, it makes me sad that, you know, um, 
because of it, there's a lot of like blowback, you know, like mm. um, Tom Hanks beating Morgan Freeman and John Travolta for Shawshank and uh -huh. Pulp Fiction, respectively. And personally, me thinking about it, I still think he deserves it. I still, I, like, I, I, I like agree Morgan as as Freeman best actor. just fine. I agree. Like, with best I think John Travolta was decent in, in uh, Pulp Fiction, mm -hmm. but I don't think either of them were better than Tom Hanks. I think Tom Hanks carried no, that. Movie. I would agree with the best actor. I would, pro I would be on the fence as far as the best. And picture. I, I also think uh, because Tarantino lost Best Director to Zemeckis. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, and no, Darabin wasn't even nominated though. Yeah, which is which is sad. Yeah. <laughs> sad. So, I, I mean, I think I can kind of I would kind of feel in terms of like cinematic production. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of interesting visual effects stuff done for the time, so I can sort of see it. Yeah. But I think you know, in terms of lasting cinematic in, uh, influence, obviously Tarantino's the one to go with. Yes. But in terms of just like quality film, I th I mean, I feel like it gets a raw deal. I honestly do, and I think it's, I think a lot of that is hindsight. And as we I said to you off camera, a lot of it is the fact that. At the time Forrest Gump was made, some of the, thing, some of the things it did, like the visual effects it did, and the story it told were so amazing for the time that that really stuck in people's right. head when now that's like, people sure. could do that at home sure. with YouTube I, and an it's, iPhone. It's not as egregious as something like Shakespeare in Love beating oh, yeah. Saving Private Ryan. Like yeah. That is just like that's also, offensively egregious. Shakespeare in Love is also just a shitty movie. Right, so. but like the quality is obvious. I said it. The quality is obviously so skewed to okay, Saving yeah. Private Ryan yeah. that's just sort of like, you almost wonder how that even yeah. happened. So yeah. And I think people would probably be a little bit less lenient or less hating on Forrest Gump if they thought that realized it was both Shawshank and Pulp Fiction. Because yeah, if I thought about it just being vote, one, probably. I would be very upset. But thinking about both, it was a tough year. That would be really hard to think which of those three was better if I saw them it, all that year. <laughs> what easily could have just split the vote such yeah. that you know it was a very small yeah. victory yeah, for it. I mean, yeah. it, it, who said it was like Forrest Gump getting eighty yeah. percent of the vote? Yeah, like, they never tell you those numbers because they don't want you to get mad. Sure, I mean, <laughs> you're right. I mean, that's a very good point. They very easily could have split it. It's yeah. like, you know, having two actors from the same film be nominated yeah. for the same award. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, it easily split the work. Yeah, no. So, moving right along, another one year later, another yeah, very historically accurate film, Apollo 13. Such a great film. Great film. This is Ron Howard directed story of the Apollo 13 mission. Yes. Obviously, Ron Howard had worked with Tom Hanks before with Splash. Yes. He obviously would go on to work with them again later with The Da Vinci Code mm -hmm. and Angels and Demons. So, this is an important partnership in his career. Yeah. Apollo 13 is one of those like landmark movies cuz it's so it's such an interesting story that as a kid I never heard anything about. This is yeah. my first exposure to the story. Uh, probably of, me too. I would, I would of, say of the failed Apollo mi mm -hmm. mission and I think the we struggle. maybe knew about it like oh Apollo 13 went to try to go to the moon but didn't get there like I, I might have known that much it. but not the mm. detail of how bad it was. I didn't know anything about it and so like you know I knew there have been moon missions and stuff. I knew about like Buzz Aldrin mm -hmm. Lady on the Moon but I ne I and maybe I'd heard of the Challenger okay. blowing up. Maybe I'd heard of that, but I ne I knew virtually nothing about sure, this. In junior high when this movie came out, so what did you care about the world? Totally, yeah, <laughs> exactly. It was all about me at that point. So uh, Maya, things have changed. Uh, <laughs> uh, but you know, I didn't know anything about it. It was just one of those things. It's like I can't believe the story. Like yeah. figure figuring out how to land a space shuttle with like the power was it of a coffee yeah, brewer like that. Yeah, or vacuum cleaner or yeah. something like that and it's just like the 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 nuance of it the the story of um was it uh was it who was who was the one left off was it gary sinise now uh, no it's it? um um kevin bacon, kevin bacon i yeah. believe is the one who stays back home who, who has to deal with you know the um displeasure of being left off yeah. in the mission because he was And then witnessing everything happening and realizing And then having to play there. a significant role and mm -hmm. figure out how to navigate this yeah. system once they have no power and bring it home. You know, the the stress of like someone like Tom Hanks having to um, he was so good without saying any words. Yeah. You know, you just look at his face and you can see all the like... He's got a very good, the fear. He's a very good face actor. Very expressive. It's, it's crazy to think. You think like seminal realist real life or realistic space movies do the right thing apollo 13 that's it they're that you don't you don't need anything else really yeah. like no one's gonna mention space cowboys because no one cares um i mean oh, it's I gonna be right those in. two and that's a pretty that's pretty amazing since space travel has happened that's two films that have been you know granted there's from the earth to the moon same people's right. series but, but later yeah, it's not um, it's it's funny to think about you know this film was not made for best picture mm -hmm. lost to braveheart it's funny to think about personally if you think about like a historical perspective like we're talking about with mm. Force Gump 
I kind of prefer Apollo 13 to Braveheart. Braveheart was enjoyable. Nah. You like Braveheart a lot? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I like... don't get me wrong. Apollo 13 is an amazing film. Braveheart is also a pretty good film. Braveheart's a good film, but it's more of like just a series of good battles as much and? as anything. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Like, I just I think the story of yeah. Braveheart, or sorry, the story of Apollo 13 mm. is a much more sort of dramatic story at the end of the day. Like, well, I, I love Mo Gibson at that point. I thought yeah. he did a great job of acting. I thought he mm -hmm. did a great job of directing. It was a great I film. That he directed that. But, you know, I just, I think I look back and I'm like, I haven't watched Braveheart since probably the 90s. Oh, man. <laughs> I have. <laughs> and I, I it's my island, Spencer. It's my island. It's it's a good film. It's still a good film, but I think I think looking back, I kind of feel I like Apollo thirteen mm. a little bit more. Interestingly enough, in the sense of kind of along the same line of uh, Forrest Gump, ha was interesting for special effects at the time. Um, Apollo thirteen also very relevant mm -hmm. and important for special effects. Not only does Ron Howard claim that after seeing the film, Buzz Aldrin asked if NASA could use the footage of the launch. Wow! Like just for because I mean it looks so good. Right, it's, yeah. I mean why not? They probably you probably see it thinking it's real space launch sure, more than totally, you realize. Yeah. And also the footage of the Saturn V was created specifically for this film. Wow! Uh, no Saturn V stock footage was used. All of the Saturn V launch that they did was a combination of traditional miniatures, pyrotechnics, and digital effects. Which That's is pretty crazy. impressive because yeah. they actually had stock footage for it. So it's That's like, crazy. Uh, how, how good are you at like, recreating something when not only did you not use real footage that was there, but when an actual spaceman's like, no, NASA should use your footage instead. That's it's better. wild. So. I also want to throw out that in terms of awards, Ed Harris and Kathleen Quinlan were nominated for Best Supporting Actor and Actress, respectively. And that's it. No wow, time really? hanks. Nope. Wow. No. And check this out. Okay. Ed Harris nominated Best Supporting Actor. Um, good on him for that. Lost to Kevin Spacey. Can't really fight too for hard what? about... From what? Uh, Usual Suspects? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, granted, he should have probably been nominated for Best Actor for Usual mm, Suspects. Mm -hmm. But, but still, you know, he yeah. deserved an award for that yeah. role. Uh, here, who is who was nominated for Best Actor? Okay. Or um, Actress? Actor. We're not, oh, okay. Um, okay. This okay. is, this okay. is okay. who was... Mom, over okay. Tom Hanks in I Apollo see. 13, and let me know your thoughts. Okay. Uh, Massimo Troisi for Il Postino. Okay. Uh, Richard Dreyfus, Mr. Rollins' Opus. Enjoyable okay. film. Okay. Anthony Hopkins, Nixon. Decent. Okay. Uh, Sean Ped, Dead Man Walking. Decent. Okay. And the winner of Best Actor, Nicolas Cage, Leaving Las Vegas. How fucking Tom Hanks uh. was left off of this list. Is crazy. He definitely deserved uh, a nomination. I think, yeah, I think he could probably. Like, I feel like awards. it was just a response to him winning two consecutive awards. Like, we can't give him. It was like after Philadelphia, we, and holy crap, look, Nicolas Cage did a real acting job. Well, I'm just saying, like, awesome after, after two straight yeah. Best Actor awards, yeah. there, mu there must have been like, look, we can't give him three. <laughs> like, honestly, like, people will fucking yeah. riot if we yeah. give him three straight. Like, yeah. like, so. like, let's compare Apollo 13, Forrest Gump, and Philadelphia, and we can leave Apollo 13 off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, seriously. Like, like it's just. It's, yeah. It's just crazy. Um, same year, though, mm -hmm. Toy Story. This is the first film, feature like film from Pixar. And the first franchise that Tom Hanks was willing to do a sequel for. He crazy. wasn't, he, uh, when Bachelor Party was made, he said I, they were talking about wanting to do a sequel mm -hmm. even at that point, and he said he didn't want to do it because he didn't want to no, be tied Apollo down to 14. sequels. He didn't want to be tied down to sequels. Uh, also, 13 and a half. That's funny. Um, you know, it seems like a no-brainer in <laughs> retrospect to do this, but if you think about it, this was Pixar the was first. Nobody. They were nobody. This was yeah. the first feature-length computer animated yeah. Yeah, film. Full, first full computer. Uh, because of that, you know, John Lasser got a special uh, achievement award at the Academy Awards. Wow, interesting. Because it had never been done before. It's the first one to make it possible. Shows you how much of a trend changed too, because it's the only Pixar film that has a full opening credits. Yeah. And also, not only that, you think about who's involved with this before they are famous. Uh, this was directed by John Lasser, who's uh -huh. done like who's so, been involved with. Yeah. I think he's the direct. He is the director of uh, animation yeah. at Disney now, not just Pixar. God. All the freaking Disney, and Good job, John. as well as directing things like you know Cars and stuff, yeah. which he did on the on the on the side. On the side, on the down um, low. But also co-written by Pete Doctor, you know, Up. Okay. 
and uh-huh. Andrew Stanton, yeah. Wally, uh-huh. as Finding well as John Nemo. Carter. Yeah, Finding like, Nemo. Think about like the shit these people have done. Like it is profound. But like at the time this came out, they were nobody. And mm-hmm. you know, granted, doing animated films like two D animated films, it's not unheard of to have famous yeah. people do voices. That's kind of a common thing. Yeah, yeah. Especially now. Yeah. But like you think about it, at the time, this is like a big, a big swing for the fences. And a huge cast of great cast. Famous people. That's probably the one thing that. If I don't know who, what order people were attached to yeah. it, I mean, that might have been the one thing to sell you on it because you have like Tim Allen, Don Rickles, Jim Varney, Wallace Shawn, John Ratzenberg. Mm-hmm. But like, it's still like a very bold to go boldly where nobody's gone before. <laughs> um, let's talk about the movie, but um, it's just a, a bold move and it was a brilliant move. Mm-hmm. Like, honestly, in terms of like brilliant moves, you talk about like taking a back end for Forrest mm-hmm. Gump, like, this has to be up there in terms of like just brilliant. And- and it tells you how long they were working on it and how much Tom Hanks cared, not just about, like, oh, I'll voice my character, but my vo- voicing my character needs to matter in time of what else I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Because Tom Hanks recorded his dialogue during the breaks between Sleepless in Seattle and A League of Their Own. Hmm. He didn't want to record his dialogue during the breaks between Philadelphia or Forrest Gump because he felt he shouldn't do comedic roles in between minutes of playing serious roles. No, that's that I'm, is awesome dedication. Not, He's like, no, you don't understand. The other stuff I'm doing is so serious. I I refuse to try to be this comedic character. Well, it's even just more than that. It's just sort of like it's great to see that return to comedy. Like yeah. these, Toy Story is just a fun film. I mean, grand, there's some drama in it. Yeah. you know, there's some suspense. But it's still a kid film, so it's but at heart. It's, it's, it's comedic. Very, there's a lot of very very funny things, and him and Tim Allen are so, so good amazing. together Their that it is really great. is fantastic. And you know, again, you know, working with people, we worked with them. On on at least two more films mm-hmm. in addition to they're doing Toy Story shorts now. Yeah. And supposedly we're going to do a fourth Toy Story oh, film. Really? Which, yeah, yeah kind of which is kind of unfortunate. But, like, um, the Toy Story shorts are even really funny. Like, mm-hmm. they did... Uh, yeah, the, the Party Saurus Rex that just came yeah. out recently. So that funny. was great. Like, great. With uh, Wall Sean reprising yeah. his role. And it's, it's, I mean, Woody is a real classic character. Like, yes. you know, you think about all the famous, like... Um, live action roles mm. he's played Woody despite not actually visually looking like Tom Hanks though he does somewhat yeah. in the animation so it is got to be one of the most signature roles Tom I, Hanks I wouldn't has be ever surprised played. if kids that grew up not knowing who he was who saw Toy Story would simply recognize him by his voice because it's he's got it, he's so iconic yeah. I mean it's, and those movies were so huge yeah. I bet there's people internationally that hear him and things and they're like oh Woody <laughs> no toy no toy uh, moving right along, we're going to talk about another massive one, another yes. temple. Another massive collaboration. Yes. Too. Saving Private Ryan. Yes. This is the World War II drama about a group of soldiers who are sent to find one soldier whose family has been wiped out, mm-hmm. and they don't want to have the entire family killed. Yes. Which I think is an I- interesting point to bring up, the fact that all the principal actors in this film underwent several days of grueling army training, ick, with the sole exception of Matt Damon who was spared that so that the other actors would resent him and would convey that resentment in their performances. That's, that's awesome. Well, that's why Steven Spielberg is incredible. Like, yeah. It's funny to think about that this came out the same year as The Thin Red Line, the Terrence Malick film, yeah. which I don't know if I mentioned too many that you times. you dislike no, I, I I do dislike it. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Let me say, I don't hate it. I you just found it very it. slow paced. And you and you I also dislike asleep. it specifically in relation to Saving Private yes. Ryan. Yes. I fell asleep twice during that yes. one, yes. which I thought was much more talky for a war film. <laughs> Saving Private Ryan rewrote the book on war films. Mm-hmm. Like it took war films to a place where it was like you were experiencing it. Yes. Like they've had stories of war veterans who are mm-hmm. unable to watch it because yeah. it was so realistic yeah, it is, there's even a ger- an actor in the german dubbing of the film who backed out while reading his lines because it was too much for him he was it's, like, I mean, it's so it's graphic mm-hmm. it's uh I, I mean this is probably one of the first times you really have that like shaky cam yeah. in this very you uh, sign- significant <laughs> uh role because it played a fact i mean you know you're running between bombs you're getting shot at steven spielberg attached drills to the outside of the camera and turned them on so it would shake it yeah. and he thought he was like on to this amazing thing until all of his dps told him hey there's like a shaky cam lens for cameras and yeah. he's like oh man i thought i invented something <laughs> that's the kind of stuff steven spielberg does yeah. though yeah. but like it, it played such an important role it mm-hmm. really it really is a lot Probably of times, most accurate World War II films. Oh, totally. But it's also like you know, I'm saying shaky cam. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of time, they do that just because you know they want a handheld style yeah, film. Yeah. This one really has a significant reason. Reason yeah. to 
or it has a significant impact yeah, upon the feel agree. of the film. Like if it had had been stationary for the entire film, I think it would have really made Definitely. it a different that film. opening Omaha Beach scene is so iconic, and not only how obviously how famous and, and mm-hmm. intense it is, but I mean just the things St- Steven Spielberg went through totally. to make it accurate. He had like amputees playing parts, so he could have people. I mean, uh, yeah. The, uh, ILM did all the special effects for this movie, but they really downplayed it a lot because they didn't want people to think it was super special effects heavy. But like most of the gunshots that are actually going off on Omaha Beach are fake. Um, the Steven Spielberg turned down the saturation on the film by sixty percent, and it's weird when it's played on cable. Like cable channels pump it up so it looks really weird and awkward. That's crazy. And and Steven Spielberg told people to uh, movie theaters that they need. First off, he did like Hitchcock and said, "I don't want people coming in once the movie started." And he also said. Turn up your sound on theaters because sound is incredibly, yeah, incredibly it's important, important in this, for this movie. Which is probably one of the reasons why it won both sound and sound editing. Well, it makes sense because the gunfire sound effects were recorded from actual gunfire with live ammunition fired from authentic period weapons. Sounds like it. From yeah, whatever recorded at a live machine gun range near Atlanta, Georgia. That's cool. Uh, Want to note that he won best director for this totally film. despite deserved. despite the film losing best picture to shakespeare in love he won best director beat madden oh, never... beat madden from shakespeare in love beat malik from the thin red line and mm-hmm. beat roberto benini for um yes. life is beautiful yes. another world war ii film yep. that just happened to be coming out at the mm-hmm. same time completely different tone <laughs> completely different tone but i want to note that tom hanks was nominated for best actor for this film mm-hmm. but he lost to roberto benini for life is beautiful yes. and you know crazy run down the yeah, steps of over people's heads yes. and you know tom hanks fantastic performances yes. this you know again much like apollo 13 so expressive even just from his face he has an honorary military title due to his performance but i will say you know as much as i like his performance in the film i ca- i gotta give it up to roberto benini like that's such a profound movie oh definitely like, definitely to make but shakespeare a in love positive oh, spin of <laughs> on death camps yeah like that is that is <laughs> <laughs> One of those premises that seems implausible uh-huh. when you read it in like a log line. Yeah, exactly. Like, You're like that. Ah, nope. How never he, gonna happen. How you could possibly make your kid think it was like a good situation uh-huh. is is insanity. Like yeah. it literally yeah. is insanity. And to make it both believable and well done mm-hmm. is just like. <laughs> A, a real art in and of yeah. itself. Like he deserved that best director nomination, and he deserved that best actor win. Mm-hmm. Like honestly, got to give it up to him. Definitely, so, big props for Saving that. Saving Private Ryan is just fantastic. And if you haven't seen it, get your surround sound system hooked up and rent it on Blu-ray. Here from Scarecrow's is probably totally. out on uh, Blu-ray. I'm and, sure, yeah. And just bl- have your mind blown. Or even just get the DVD and have your mind blown. Yeah, Either way, it's seriously, gonna be good. it's like that and Heat are like my two signature. Test out my surround sound system is working mm. movies. I put those on. Turn the volume up. Do uh, Terminator 2. Mm, another good one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, that brings us to this Friday, which is the 9th, 26th, 26th, 26th. All right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Cloud Atlas is yes. coming out. This is the film from the Wojciechowskis, mm-hmm. along with... Nice, uh, like you've changed that yeah, to just yeah, the Wojciechowskis. Yeah. And, and uh, Tom Tyker, Twiker, however you pronounce his last Tickver. name. Tickver. Is that how yeah, it's pronounced? German. Wow. He's German. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Run, roll, he did the run, roll, roll, run. run, roll, mm-hmm. run. Um, Amazing film. Which is the story of a period of like 500 years yeah, it's and like interweaving six different lives. stories that all intervolve or interlink around this piece of music, I believe. The Cloud Atlas quintet or something. Yeah, so. I, I think that's an important part of it. But it's essentially like, you know, about how like one person's life impacts another yes. impacts another and, and weave I, together and I, I believe like uh well the, the, listen to the description okay. an exploration of how actions of individual lives impact one another in the past present and future mm-hmm. as one soul is shaped from a killer into a hero and an act of kindness ripples across centuries to inspire a revolution hmm. so you know it really talks about that sort of like butterfly effect mm-hmm. over time sort of Dave, s- david mitchell the author of the book is a very very popular and prolific author well, right now so. one uh, british book award Awards for literary fiction, and it won the Richard and Judy Book Award of the Year. So it's a pretty big deal. It's got a lot of notable people in it, yeah, you know. Tons. Uh, Tom Hanks, Holly Berry, Hugo Weaving, Susan Sarandon, Hugh Grant, uh, Jim Sturgis, Jim Broadbent, like yeah. James Darcy, like just tons and tons of people. Uh-huh. It's a really epic scale type movie. It's gotten a lot of sort of split um, response in terms of it. I think some people think it's like not enough development hmm. or it's just too 
um, big in its gotcha. sort of concept. I'm curious to check it out. Yeah. I, and it's it's like two and a half hours. Yeah, so it's I, not I, I for feel like it's going to be um, how, I, how I felt before Watchmen came out, where I'm going to wonder, is it going to go the route of being so close to detail that it's incredibly, incredibly long and not... Well, and, or is yeah. it going to try to cut that out for pacing and miss some element of the story? I'll tell you what I th I've been sort of paralleling it to, and granted I haven't seen it, but this is what it feels like to me. The Fountain. Uh, where you have different sort of time periods that influence one each other and sort of like that was past, the same present, set of future. Act well, yeah, I guess, yeah. yeah. So, no, I can see that. And the yeah. same, same actors yeah. were involved yeah. with all that. So yeah. I, I, I definitely... I, I look at the. Do you not like the fountain? You, I like the okay. fountain, but I I, fountain. I look at the fountain. I see that there is a very avid group of people who like it, but there's yes. a lot of people who a have never had interest or don't even know about yes. it who haven't seen it. So yes. it seems like one of those things that could easily be just overlooked. Yeah, I can see that. I, I, I have a feeling people. it's going to be something that. Uh, like the fountain is going to pull people in for special effects, but it's going to probably be more of a thinker. And so I think maybe a lot of people might get pulled in thinking it's a big, easy blockbuster and then have to think. Well, that, not, well, that's just it. Care. Like, I don't know if people are going to think it's going to be a big, easy blockbuster. If it'll be, I mean, they put a hundred million dollars into this film and I don't know if that's, that's a lot of mo money to put into a movie like this. That, I mean, I think they're depending upon like Tom Hanks and Holly Berry and yeah. those type of people to pull people in because if if not, it could easily skew into like the big bomb range yeah, if, yeah. if you don't get people because it's, it's it's it looks like a thinker even just from the trailer. You're just yeah, like, it's just such a grandiose big story that it's one of those things that you're either going to pull people in so they're interested where it's going or people are going to lose it so fast. Well, and that and that's just the thing is like I watched that trailer and I. I look at it, I'm like, I don't know if this feels like a crowd pleaser. Mm. Like, I don't necessarily think that you have to make films to be crowd pleasers, yeah. but I look at, when you're spending a hundred million dollars on it, that's the kind thing, of an the, important the thing. The thing I look at is, I go, please, Wojciechowski's, be mostly involved for the special effects. Please, Tom Tickver? Yeah, Tickver. Be mostly involved for directing, because I like his directing work, and I'm not quite so in fan yeah, of their. It'll be interesting work, to see so. how it breaks down for sure. I mean, he was definitely involved a as a writer, producer, and composer. So yeah, that's it's definitely a complicated piece. And he did, uh, yeah, I think didn't Tom Tickfer also do Perfume? Was that yes, him as well? Because one of the actors yeah. that carries mm -hmm. over from that as well. Yeah. So I mean, I think he can do big, grandiose scale stories and weird alternating persona. I'm just worried about oh, this is how much like... Matrix influence is sure, going to. Sure, uh, this is, or I would worry more about uh, what's it called? Um, the the Ninja Assassin? No, no. I wish that's not that's not them though. That's just them oh, that's producing. Right. Yeah, that's um, right. <laughs> The driving one. Uh, oh, Speed Racer. Speed Racer. I'd, I'd much rather Matrix 1, <laughs> less Matrix sequel slash yeah, Speed Racer. Yeah, if it's original Matrix plus Run, Lola, Run slash Perfume, Good win. Go. If it's Good anything else the Wachikowskis have done, plus the Princess and the Warrior, yeah. maybe it's fine. Yeah. Anyway, um, let us know your feedback mm -hmm. and join us next time for our DVD rundown for the week of October 30th. For episode 200. <laughs> yeah. And as always, you can find us at MacGuffinPodcast.com, yes. uh, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, mm -hmm. Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast, phone number 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes, Blip, Roku, Miro. Get glue. Check, Check in. in. And we will see you next time. Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. This type don't even try to buy the side style. Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.